You've got questions, we've got answers. Coming up on today's Locked on Giants podcast, we're going to get into the mailbag questions you guys submitted on Twitter. Uh, What is the plan in the starting rotation? The Giants have made some signings, but there remain some questions. Are they going to add an impact starter? Are they going to add any other free agent starters? Or are they trying to clear a spot to be able to incorporate some young players? It's a kind of balancing act that teams have to deal with. And we'll talk about that and so much more. 40 men players who could be on the move in trades this offseason. So a lot to get into on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. Thanks for making Locked on Giants your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, now including YouTube. And coming up on today's show, as I said, we're going to get into some mailbag questions. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions on Twitter. Uh, First question comes from Ricky, who asks, what's the plan in the rotation? Are they going to patch it together or make a big trade? Will they see how it goes and reassess in season? And also from Ricky, how likely do you think the lack of moves is due to players on the cusp such as Ramos, Jelly, and Castro. And then there are a few other questions about the rotation that we'll get to as we go through this. But I just kind of want to assess the state of the starting rotation because the Giants did make some moves here, obviously. A lot of the moves, I don't want to say treading water, but bringing back players they already had. So, of course, you can't consider it like an upgrade when you're just returning a lot of the players. So, overall, of course, they've lost Kevin Gosman, and they've lost Johnny Cueto still, and they've brought in Alex Cobb, and then everything else uh, being the same for now. But to me, I've talked about this before, but Cobb is a huge upgrade over Cueto, but you're still, you've still lost Kevin Gosman. And so the question is, how are they going to fill out the rest of the rotation? And it remains to be seen. I don't know. There are some intriguing free agent options still available, And there's even more intriguing trade options available. I don't know what they're going to do, of course. But on the trade market, you've got Luis Castillo, Sonny Gray, Tyler Malley, all on the Reds. The Reds are just not spending a dime and they're they're trying to shed payroll. Their owner, frankly, even just came out and said they have to align their payroll with their resources. And so they sent a signal to the rest of the league that they are trying to get rid of some money. And then over in Oakland, the A's are retooling. They're in a position, they miss the postseason, and they're trying to kind of turn over some of their roster as they do. They go through these cycles where they're winning, and then they need to have some roster turnover, and they're in one of those off seasons. And so they have made Sean Manaya, Chris Bassett, and Frankie Montas potentially available in trades. So there are a lot of options still remaining for the San Francisco Giants. But the second part of that question, Ricky, uh, how likely do you think the lack of moves is due to players on the cusp, including Jelly? So first of all, I don't think there's been such a lack of moves. They have re-signed Brandon Belt, Anthony DiScofani, Alex Wood, Alex Cobb. That's four moves. So I wouldn't, there, there's plenty of teams that have done basically nothing and the Giants aren't among them. Those guys have cost a combined hundred million dollars for in terms of overall commitments but anyway leaving room for players to come onto the major league roster and establish themselves is an important part of what this team does because and I know this because they talk about it so 
significantly, Tyler Beatty is the guy who comes to mind for me because he is out of minor league options. And they really, truly do seem to believe in Tyler Beatty. And for good reason, in my opinion, because he finished out the 2019 season really, really well. And going into 2020 in spring training, they viewed him as a front of the rotation guy, potentially, and was pitching better than anyone they had in camp. And they thought that he could turn into an ace that season. And then, unfortunately, he had an arm injury and ended up needing Tommy John surgery. So a guy with that kind of potential, I don't think they just want to give up on. And the fact that he's out of minor league options means they can't send him down. So he has to be on the roster. So I think they do want to continue to create opportunity for him. And if you fill out your rotation with five guys who absolutely are going to start if they're healthy, I don't know. It To me, it's a possibility that they don't want to add any more fully established guys because they want to leave open that fifth spot for a guy like Beattie. Uh, but you would need depth, you know, like the Aaron Sanchez's of the world, the kind of one-year reclamation type signings. I don't know that this is how they're going to approach it. If it is, I would hope that they would go into the offensive side of the market and try to really improve their team there because there's obviously a lot of risk. Tyler Beatty not necessarily going to perform. He was quote unquote healthy this season, rehabbing basically from Tommy John, but he did uh, pitch in the minor leagues, ended up throwing a lot of innings, 48, not a lot, 48 and two thirds innings, 16 starts in the minors and just horrible command issues, a walk rate near 20%. But that's kind of typical for guys coming back from Tommy John. So Ultimately, I think they're going to continue to add. I don't think uh, they've made their starting pitching additions and then that's just it. That's not how they operate. They're going to end up, whether it's smaller signings or bigger signings or both, they're going to make, they're going to continue to make additions. But of course, we are in a lockout, so that's not going to happen for a while, right? We're not going to see any additions for now. But it's December 3rd. Like, I, I've, a lot of people are acting like the offseason ended. Uh, at the lockout, but it's not the case. And this team is opportunistic and there's a lot of off season left. And I keep saying this, but we'll judge the off season when it's over. It's far from over. And unfortunately it's lockout season, but um, yeah, I just see them continuing to add in the rotation certainly, but they've got four quality starters. They haven't, they're worse off than they were to finish out the year, but Webb, DiScofani, Wood, and Cobb, are all quality starting pitchers. So yeah, they need more, but it's a good start to me. It's a fine start uh, to me. So coming up next, we will get to more of these questions. I want to get more into that point about guys who are out of options because it's not just BD. And do they want to create opportunities for all of these guys or might there be too many of them that it's going to force a trade? But first, this holiday season, grab the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar or even better than a candy bar, Built Bar. Filled with so much holiday goodness, rich with decadent flavor, covered in chocolate but amazingly low in calories, sugar, net carbs, and fat, and high in protein. You get the be- the best of both worlds, delicious and healthy. They have so many flavors you'll have a hard time choosing. I can definitely attest to that. Don't bring up your favorite Built Bar flavor at family parties People are so passionate about their favorite flavor, they'll fight for it and things could get out of hand. So cozy up with something warm, dip your Built Bar into a piping hot cup of cocoa, let it melt a little and give your beverage a bit of Built Bar flavor, plus you'll have a nice melty Built Bar to go with it. Just be sure to have some napkins on hand. Go to BuiltBar.com and use promo code LOCKED15 and you can get 15% off your next order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, here we go. We're going to get into more of your questions. I hope I was able to basically answer that one. Ricky, uh, what's the plan in the rotation? I just see it all as a possibility, and I'm not sure that there's one direction that they're definitely going to go. I, I do think there are still some intriguing options in the free agent market 
but also those trade candidates and also just depth signings and giving younger guys opportunities. Remember last year, Logan Webb was one of those younger guys deserving of an opportunity. So, and he turned into an ace. Like, it's really important to continue to create opportunities for your young players to break through at the major league level. And I think that they may see Tyler Beattie in that mold. They may see Sammy Long in that mold. Sean Jelly, who you mentioned. They've got to let these guys get an opportunity. And so that's not to say I just definitely don't think they should go out and acquire Luis Castillo, but it is to say make sure you give those guys an opportunity. The thing is, I believe it'll come Because there's always going to be injuries. There's always going to be something that happens to give guys an opportunity. And they know that. And the way that they did it in 2021, they had a rotation full of guys who were intriguing and had some upside. But they also made room for a Logan Webb. And look what happened. So anyway, there's questions about the pitchers I see as the most realistic trade targets. I think I mentioned them. The guys on the Reds and the A's, they would cost uh, varying levels of prospects it's really hard to come up with like a very realistic trade possibility but you know you're not going to get a front of the rotation starter for very cheap and you're going to you it's going to cost what it's going to cost for the talent that you're getting back but I do think that the Giants are primed for a trade in a way because they have a 40-man roster loaded with a bunch of guys who are out of minor league options. So Katie asks, do you see anyone on the 40-man likely to be traded? And to me, the answer is maybe. And I don't know that I can specifically point to one guy, but what I can say is that the Giants have, like I mentioned with Tyler Beattie, they have several players who are in that position. Uh, Tyro Estrada, Steven Duggar, Mauricio Dubon, Lamont Wade Jr. All of these players are out of minor league options, along with Darren Ruff, uh, Harleen Garcia, Dominic Leone, but specifically on the position player side and Tyler Beatty, Duggar, Estrada, Beatty, Dubon, and Wade Jr. Like what this means is that they either have to carry all of these guys or somebody or multiple guys would have to be designated for assignment. And I think that they're all deserving of a major league opportunity. Dubon was kind of buried in the minor leagues last season. He he got sent down and never really came back up uh, with Estrada taking that spot. And so I think that's still the case. Estrada probably would have a spot on that major league roster. Wade Jr., I think there's no question. Uh, Tyler Beattie, I'm, I'm kind of iffy. The thing is that I can report on is that I heard Farhan Zaidi, I think it was in this YouTube chalk talk at home thing that the Giants put out a couple weeks ago. Uh, he specifically mentioned Tyler Beatty, Tyro Estrada, Steven Duggar. And so I believe just off of a gut feeling that those guys would deserve an opportunity. And then secondly, the fact that he said that means that they envision these guys being on that roster because what else are you going to do? What it could do, though, is it could force the Giants to make a trade or compel them to make a trade because do you really want to have all these guys who may or may not be able to establish themselves on your major league roster? And so Estrada, yes, I think he can take over potentially that utility position in the infield platoon with Tommy LaStella, uh, fill in at shortstop for Brandon Crawford, who does sometimes, uh, believe it or not, need a day off. Mauricio Dubon was that guy, but Estrada may have taken that spot. And so that to me, maybe Dubon is the guy who most looks like he could be a candidate to be dealt. But all of these guys being out of options should force the Giants to do something. And plus, like if they want to upgrade in the outfield, as an example, we'll get to that question now. These guys being out of options is going to influence what they do. So Ricky asks, how do you see the Giants patching up the outfield? Yastrzemski seems to need to be platoon. So I see them needing a right-handed and left-handed outfielder like Nick Castellanos and Jock Peterson. And then Logan says, what do you see as the biggest need on offense for the Giants 
what players would you target to fit that need? And so, first of all, I mean, the catcher position does continue to stand out to me as a position where it could be a position of need, but again, they want to create that opportunity for Joey Bart, of course. I have said before that ideally Joey Bart is your third catcher. What I meant by that was like, ideally you have Buster Posey and Casale can be your backup and Bart can get an opportunity at times throughout the year. Maybe if uh, Casale is banged up and goes on the 10 day IL, you can give Joey Bart some starts. Just let him try to establish himself. It's never like ideal to just have to rely on a completely unproven young player especially coming off a 107 win season when expectations are high. So I do look at the catcher position as still possibly a position of need for the Giants, but you're not just going to start Casale over Bart, I think. you At that point, you might as well just see what you have in Joey Bart. But it's pretty clear, especially if Estrada is on the Major League roster, that the infield is pretty much accounted for with Belt, Lastella, Estrada, Crawford, and Longoria. But then in the outfield it's a little more unclear. You've got Yastrzemski, who I agree probably needs to be platooned, and so how do you do it? You have Austin Slater, who can platoon there, but you've also got Lamont Wade Jr., who probably needs, not probably, definitely to me needs to be platooned as well. And so the way it kind of is now, let's just talk about how the depth chart shakes out now, To me, you've got your Ruff and or Slater along with Lamont Wade Jr. in left. Although, to finish out the year, I mean, Lamont Wade Jr. actually played a bunch of right field as well, and sometimes Yastrzemski played center. So it's a lot of moving parts there, but let's call it Wade Jr. and Ruff, who will be back, in left. And then in center, you've got... Yastrzemski sometimes played there, but for now it's kind of Duggar, who again, out of minor league options. So you can't just say, oh, well, we'll start Duggar in the minor leagues and he can kind of fill in as needed by, you know, because of an injury or something. So let's just say Duggar is projected to be your center fielder at this moment. And then in right, that would give you Yastrzemski, who could platoon with Slater. So to me, you clearly at least need a right-handed platoon partner with Duggar. It could be Mauricio Dubon, but then you're platooning at every single outfield position, and that's probably too many roster spots to devote to your outfield. That's six roster spots uh, to to complete your outfield. Although they could do it, but probably not. But then remember, Dubon and Estrada and Duggar have to and Wade have to be on this roster, or else designated for assignment. And so it's going to force some action. But I agree with you that they could definitely afford to make an upgrade in the outfield. I'm not so sure they need two players. Let's say you get a center fielder. I don't know if Seiya Suzuki, if they believe that he is a true center fielder and can handle that position, but let's say he was and they viewed him as an everyday guy. You could have Yastrzemski and Slater platooning in right, and you could have Wade Jr. and Ruff platooning in left. So if you had an everyday center fielder, you don't need to bring in two outfielders necessarily. But there are options. I mean, Michael Conforto is a left-handed outfielder, stands out to me a little bit as a possible fit, but the Giants, Farhan Zaidi has mentioned right-handed position player. He didn't necessarily say it had to be an outfielder, but to me it would be with a good at-bat quality and some power. And so Tommy Pham stands out. Seiya Suzuki, Nick Castellanos is, I think, a guy that a lot of Giants fans have focused on. And also Chris Bryant. I mean, let's talk about Chris Bryant for a second. Given the state of the market, I've kind of come back around on Chris Bryant. It just depends on what the contract would be. The projected contract is for like six plus years, $150 million or so. But some of the prognosticators have him getting like five years, 90 million, which I think is more possibly in line with the production you're going to get. Maybe five years, 110, you kind of push a little bit, but we'll see. I don't know if the Giants want to devote that kind of a 
commitment to anybody, but you know, Bryant is still out there, Castellanos, Suzuki, Fam. You've got kind of a spectrum of different talent levels and also projected costs. So it remains to be seen what they would do, but I like kind of any of those guys and I could see any of them helping out the Giants. So coming up next, we have more questions to get to. We're going to talk about an article that was written by uh, in Forbes.com about uh, Farhan Zaidi basically being kind of cheap. And so we'll, we'll break that down a little bit coming up next. Bet Online has you covered all season more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues the march to the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code LOCKED ON to receive your bonus. From basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, Write to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts. All right, here we go. We're going to talk about and we're going to get to some more questions. There was a, a question from Gonzalo who asks, maybe thoughts on this story from this morning entitled San Francisco Giants president is an MLB team owner's dream. So I did read it. It is coming courtesy of Jules Posner, who I know and and follow on Twitter. And we, we frequently agree. But after reading this article, I actually, there was like a fundamental point that I have to say that I do not agree with. And for those of you who haven't read it, the premise of the article, the, the, point of the article was to say that Farhan Zaidi is an owner's dream because basically they are able to win while also shedding costs. And there's a lot of that I just think is true. And there's also a lot of me that says, if you win, it doesn't really matter to me what you spend. I just want the team to be good and good every single year and the best possible version of the team that you can put out. But the conclusion of the article is what I disagreed with, and it goes as follows. Quote, the fact remains a facsimile of a great player is not the same as having a great player. This is what ultimately led to the Giants' demise in the 2021 National League Division Series. Having players that are statistically similar to Max Scherzer or Mookie Betts is not the same as having Max Scherzer or Mookie Betts. And then it goes on to say, if the Giants are serious about winning, they will have to spend. Unfortunately, Farhan Zaidi's job is to make sure the Giants win enough to pacify the fan base while continuing to make the team as profitable as possible for the owners. So I just don't agree with that. And Specifically, the facsimile of a great player is not the same as having a great player. So the point being, like, the Giants were able to be a great team without kind of the name brand talent. And But I will also say, before I even get into why I disagree with that, they traded for Chris Bryant, who is a big name. And, I mean, Mookie Betts is like Mike Trout. You know, it's one of the top three players in the game, arguably. So nobody, very few teams have a Mookie Betts. And Max Scherzer, same thing, although, I mean, he was available to sign this winter. But Kevin Gosman they had, who fans are considering now to be like an ace pitcher that the Giants wouldn't spend on. But they had him. They're the guys who brought him in in the first place and and unlocked his talent. And so I would argue they did have great players like a Max. I mean, Max Scherzer, Mookie Betts, almost nobody has those guys. But Kevin Gosman and Chris Bryant are two players, Bryant almost certainly, and Kevin Gosman already did, $100 million plus dollar players, and they had them. And they had Buster Posey, Brandon Crawford playing at an MVP. He, got, he finished in third in MVP voting. So I would kind of argue they did have star-level players. And they won 107 games, for crying out loud. But 
what I dis the reason I disagree with this is when I look at what happened next. The Dodgers won that series. By the way, five game series goes to game five, and it's a was it a one run game? It was two to one, right? Was the final score the so one run determined the series. I just don't think you can draw a conclusion about this is why they lost when it was that close. And right, so Mookie Betts had a big series. Max Scherzer closed it out. But did he even make a start besides that? Yes, he did. And the Giants won that game, by the way, when Max Scherzer started. Uh, Evan Longoria hitting the solo home run. But what really drives the point home for me that I'm trying to make is what happened next when the Dodgers moved on to the National League Championship Series. Mookie Betts in the NLCS hit 174 with a 296 on base and 217 slugging. He had a terrible series offensively. Walker Bueller had a 7.04 ERA. Max Scherzer had a 4.15 ERA, only pitched four and a third innings and dealt with kind of a arm issue, dead arm. So these players that supposedly are the reason the Giants lost because they didn't have this name brand star talent didn't perform for the Dodgers in the next round. And the guy who carried the Braves to victory was Eddie Rosario, who hit 560 with a 607 on base and 1,040 slugging percentage. And Eddie Rosario was signed to a one-year deal last offseason, and he was traded in a salary dump deal in the middle of the season. So star talent is not what played the role for the Braves winning in a longer series. And the Dodgers star talent, who are specifically named in the article, did nothing and were part of their demise. And so I just can't buy into the argument. And it's it's kind of the conclusion of the article. The fact remains, a facsimile of a great player is not the same as having a great player. I'm j I just don't think that that's true. If you can get the exact production that you would get without, I'm not saying avoid signing a Mookie Betts, but I'm saying if you have that production, then the point is that like the stars shine the brightest in the playoffs, but that's just not necessarily true. And it wasn't true for Betts or Scherzer in the following series. And I think the argument that most people will make that the, the what the Braves had against the Dodgers was like chemistry and, and like good vibes and stuff. So we always fit the narrative to match what ends up happening. And so if the Dodgers had won, we would say it's because of the star talent. But if the Braves win, it's because they have a special something about them and they're a team of destiny. So, yeah, I mean, and then it's not like the Giants just got blown out of the water by L.A. They had a tough time hitting. I would say Brandon Belt being injured was more of a factor than them not, you know, than the, the point that is the conclusion of the article. So, again, I respect Jules. We agree on a lot. Not that we have to agree on everything, certainly, but I did not agree with the conclusion of that article. So, anyway, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, once again, my name is Ben Kaspik. You can follow me on Twitter at Ben Kaspik. Also, please like, comment, subscribe, leave a review if you feel so inclined. And thank you so much uh, in advance. And thank you to everyone who's done so already. Have a great weekend. I can't wait to be with you again on Monday. You are now Locked on Giants.